Welcome to the town board meeting of October 19, 2023. Um, I'd like to ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and also for a moment of silence for the and for many, for many conflicts of the party. Structure Local Law 3 of 2023, the tax cap override. Uh, Desiree, could you read the public hearing notes? The public hearing is being held in two public comments on Structure Local Law 3 of 2023 to override the tax levy limit established in General Municipal Law Section 3C of the town's 2024 budget. The public notice was printed in the Times World Record on October 12, 2026. All right, thank you. At this time, the board is still working on the budget uh, and we're doing everything it can that we can do to stay under the tax cap. Uh, if that tax cap is exceeded, the budget cannot be adopted without the score in place first. Should the final budget be under the tax cap, the board will then hold a public hearing to adopt a different law than this one. Does anybody from the public have any comments? Uh, Alright, thank you. 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 Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carried. Uh, Desiree, can you read the resolution prepared to adopt the local law? Whereas the resolution was duly adopted by the town board on September 7, 2023, scheduled a public hearing to be held on October 19, 2023, to hear all interested parties on introductory local law 3 of 2023 entitled tax cap override. And whereas on September 7, 2023, the town board designated itself as an agency with respect to a secret review of the foregoing proposed local law, Preliminary classified the proposed action as an unlisted action under SECRA and scheduled a separate public hearing with respect to the action. And whereas said notice of said public hearing was duly advertised in the Times Town Record, the official newspaper of the town, on October 12th, 2023. According to law. And whereas the town board has reviewed the has reviewed the proposal of the law, the short environmental assessment form prepared in connection therewith, and considered the public comment made provided at the public hearing, and after due deliberation thereon, they hereby resolve one the proposal of the law constitutes an unlisted action to serve the secret. Two, the proposal of the law has no significant adverse environmental impacts, and the town board hereby issues a negative declaration thereon. Three, the adoption of the proposal of the law is in the best interest of the residents of the town, and the town board hereby adopts said local law four of 2023 entitled tax cap override. And four, the town clerk is hereby directed to enter said local law in the minutes of this meeting, and in the local law book of the town of Newberry, and give due notice of the adoption of said local law to the secretary of the city. Thank you, Any discussion? Okay, uh, Deborah, could you do a roll call? Uh, motion to approve resolution. Okay, do you have a motion? Do you have a motion second? Uh, second. Council member Fulani? Aye. Council member Fulani? Aye. Council member Finnegan? Aye. Council member Etzel? I know I'm out of order, sorry. Council member Luchan? Aye. Supervisor Burke? Aye. All right, thank you very much. On to public comment on agenda items. Does anybody from the public have anything from they'd like to speak to during the agenda items? Okay, thank you. And we'll move on to administrative business, acceptance of the minutes, and I have a motion a second to accept the minute, receive the minutes from the meeting held on October 5th, 2024. Okay, any discussion? Aye. Now we move on to approval of abstract. Please read abstract 21. Abstract 21 contains vouchers 231819 through 231918 13 and totals $472,404.45. Thank you. Um, can I have a motion and a second to approve the abstract as well? I'll make a motion. Second. Okay, any discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Approval of the budget modifications. I'd like to read the modifications for them. There are several. <coughs> the, first is the, the first is for the Parks Department by increasing A7110.463 chemicals. By $1,000, decreasing A7110.436 JPP pool water by $1,000. The second is the report by increasing. A7110.400 contractual expenses by $1,346 and decreasing A1110.100 Justice Court Personnel Service by $1,346. Next for the Animal Shelter and Earl Reservoir by increasing A1650.200 surveillance cameras by $47,867.25 and decreasing A9060.801 HRA and MVP by $47,000. Next for the parks by increasing A7110.433, ticket issue printing by $600 and decreasing A7110.436, JPP pool water by $600. Next for the Justice Court renovation by increasing A1620.468, Justice Court renovation by $8,133.81 and A5900 fund balance by $8,143.81. Police fund by increasing B, 1910.400, unallocated insurance by $15,600. B, 5999, appropriate fund balance by $24,100. B, 9060.800, health insurance by $83,500, and decreasing B, 9060.801, HRA, MVP by $75,000. And the last is also for the police by increasing B, 3120.447, capital grant 2021 through 83124. By $75,000 and increasing B3306, 2124, technical grant 2021 to 831-2024 by $75,000. So the modification for the parks is to provide for the last four room delivery for the JPD pool and P2 of the filter cleaning. The modification of the Justice Court is to fund consultant services due to staffing issues. The modification for the animal shelter and Earl Reservoir Beach is for the installation of the surveillance cameras that we approved in June 1st and September 17th. The second modification for the parks is to cover the increased fees for consultant uh, con contact. The modification for the Justice Court renovations to cover costs that exceed what was expected. The modification for the police fund is to cover the liability and health insurance costs that were higher than budgeted. The second modification for police is to recognize a grant receipt. With that said, can I have a motion to second to approve the modifications as read and explained? Let's make a motion. Second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All. Okay, advertise for letters of interest for the upcoming expiring terms. The following terms will be expiring this year. One seat on the Parks and Recreation Committee, which is Brad Cassidy. Two seats on the Library, bo library Board, which are Ellie Pastel and Gail uh, Chimarello. One seat on the Beautification Committee, which is Diane Marone. And the motion is second to authorize the town clerk to advertise the upcoming expiring terms on the Parks Recreation Committee, Library Board, and Beautification Committee. Letters of interest will be accepted until close of business on December 1st, 2023. Make the motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Old business, we have no old business to discuss tonight. New business, employment agreement for police lieutenant position. Can I have a motion and a second to authorize myself to sign the employment agreement for Kevin Phillips for the position of police lieutenant, which will be effective December 2nd, 2023 through December 31st, 2026. This agreement will remove Lieutenant Phillips from the PDF. I have a motion. I'll second. Any discussion? Uh, it was supposed to be a correction on personal leave. Uh, it, it states six. Oh, I was supposed to draw that. Yeah. Okay. I uh, talked to the tenant about it. It is four. It is four. But just mm -hmm. so there's no conflicting. Right. <coughs> he, he called me. Sorry. He did call me about that. He asked if I wanted him to resend it. I told him to just draw a line through it and make it whatever the number it was. Just so that uh, I can sign it. Yeah, for I, I, I spoke to him. Okay. Personal? I spoke to him. Personal. Personal. Personal yeah. time is four. It says 
So you will be correcting that. No, no, that was for that was good for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 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 Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, appointment of special prosecutor for the Justice Court. We have a motion and second to appoint Marcelo Cerugliano as special prosecutor for Judge David Hassan with a start date of November 1st, 2023, and an hourly rate of $100. Uh, any discussion? Oh, first of all, I'm sorry, I need a motion and second. I make a motion. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, I need a motion and a second to appoint George Drostovich as special prosecutor for Judge Bruce Schoenberg with a start date of September 19, 2023 at an hourly rate of $100. Motion. Second. Any discussion? I'd just like to say that, um, yes, what I'd like to say is um, <coughs> prior to this, we had one prosecutor uh, working at the, at the courts, and that person had needed to resign to be accepted a resignation a few months ago. A few weeks ago, I'm sorry. And um, both judges, um, are going to uh, chose to choose their own prosecutor moving forward. They might die. Jackie McBarris? I might. So just so we are clear that the um, both judges chose to select their own prosecutor moving forward. Um, and that is the reason why there are two prosecutors tonight. Um, so on the agenda. I believe there are hours, you know, the one prosecutor works for both, so this, this will be the two working and uh, for each one, so the hours should remain the same, uh, just two, two instead of one. Okay? So, uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, the ABC notification, Village of Woodbury Park Avenue, Waterland. Uh, the town received notification on October 13th of the village uh, of the Board of Trustees declaring themselves as lead agency under CP for their Project Park Avenue Water Line. And I have a motion and second to, con to consent to the Village of Woodbury Board of Trustees to serve as lead agency in the application of the Park Avenue Water Line project and request that the Town Board continue to be notified on filings and hearings in this matter. I make a motion. Second. Okay. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Okay. Motion carried. Uh, next is the scheduled public hearing for the fiscal year 2024 preliminary budget. We need a motion and a second to schedule a public hearing to be held on to held at 7:30 p.m. on November 2nd, 2023, to entertain public comments on the fiscal year 2024 preliminary budget. November 2nd. November 2nd. Yeah. Yeah. Discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I'm sorry, Jeffrey, what side battery is that from? Double A. It's on the record, yeah. I'm going to put it in the midst. That's right, it's the water double A battery. As a reminder, this is a bad one? Yeah. Bad battery. Okay. Uh, department reports, uh, committee minutes, supervisor reports, Edward, do you do the supervisor's report for September 23rd? Uh, has receipts totaling $222,421.20 and disbursements totaling $1,198,229.40. Okay. Right. We need a motion and second to approve the report as read. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. All right, I'm going to receive the town clerk's report for September 23, the animal control report, September 23, the police communications report, September 23, buildings and grounds report, September 23, parks and recreation committee minutes, minutes September 19, 23, library director report, September 23, library board minutes, September 26, 23, beautification committee minutes, September 7, 23, and the budget versus actual, September 23. Thank you all for that. And now we'll move on to public comment. Anybody here in public comment? Let's go on the front row. Jimmy Ng, Helen Mills. So, my understanding is that 
from your position on down to anyone, everyone on the board is. You represent me, you work for me. And this board meeting is basically about the public, not about the board. You know, although I was basically told my opinion does not matter so much, so I've only been here for two years, I'm asking you guys to rescind this Jimmy Ingram that was proposed by Tyler Edsel. Because if you're telling me that I have five minutes to count down <coughs> this to this, you know what, hey, I may ramble on on certain things. But you know what, we may come to an issue where it does take that time. We are passionate about certain things. They are passionate with, with five minutes because you're here too long, too bad. Mm -hmm. And basically, you are sending the wrong message to the public. I don't see how you can even not think that. For the public to know that for me to come here, you know what, countdown starts. You have five minutes. I'm glad that we, you're allowed to have comments towards specific members at least, but that, you know, you know, for example, in the village board meeting, you had the couple that their home was flooded. They were up there for 10, 15 minutes discussing what was going on, finding a solution. So when you did stop, you got five minutes, we got to go home? No. Okay? That's just wrong. And, you know, mm -hmm. gauge public reaction. This is about us. We are good men. Anybody who's representing, and I see all, all the, the slogans and everything else, like working for Woodbury, well, passing that resolution doesn't mean you're working for Woodbury. Okay? I don't see how anyone can, you know, can even say they are running for a position to benefit us. You know what? You're running and benefiting us when it suits you. Point blank. Okay? And this is not, you know, whatever. You know what, you say whatever, I, I really don't care anymore. My other issue is we got one more meeting before the election. I love how the groups, you know what, groups across America, the animal shelters, they get these events out there that, hey, pull the plunge. I see you posting about that on regular places. Why is there no, even though people should know, election day is the 7th, but there's just no reminder, no PSA. Hey, go out there and vote. You're a limited population, Every vote counts. All the people that have won and lost know that we're talking about occasion, single digits. Let's get the public out there. Okay? And that's really what it is. Let's get the public involved. Let's get the public in these meetings. Let's get public familiar with what's going on. And let's get rid of this rule. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, comments. Anybody in the second round? <coughs> You're in a second. Oh, okay. Okay. How's everyone tonight? Uh, my name is Annie McGinnis. For those of you that don't know me, I reside on Estrada Road in the hamlet of Central Valley. I would like to take this opportunity to discuss uh, an incident that occurred in the town of Woodbury on Sunday, October 8th. My fiance and I have heard multiple varying accounts about the final moments of our family pet McGruff's incredible life. And I want to take you, I want to take this time to tell you his story. McGruff was a bloodhound Rhodesian Ridgeback mixed breed dog who was the doppelganger for the 1980s dare crime dog in his heyday. Our McGruff was born in 2008. He was 16 years old. He lived his first five years of his long life on Summer Hill Road. In 2013, he was moved a whopping 200 yards uptown to the Strata Road, where he had spent the last 10 years sleeping on the porch of his doghouse in the sun, chasing after squirrels, barking at deer, playing out in our yard with his brother and sister canine pals, and stealing loaves of bread from off my kitchen counters. We lovingly nicknamed the gruff the bread man because no bread stood a chance if left within mouth reach. His bloodhound nose 
could sniff out bread in another area code. He absolutely loved bread. In 2021, at the age of 14 years old, McGruff was diagnosed with a terminal illness known as Cushing syndrome. Our veterinarian at BCA advised us that the side effects of the treatment for Cushing's was sometimes worse than the disease itself. For a dog of his age, and based on their recommendation and our religious beliefs, we decided to make him comfortable at home. The vet gave us remedial as needed for pain, and he followed up regularly and continued to live on for another two whole entire years. On Sunday, October 8th, we can only assume that McGruff must have been feeling especially energetic after being brought outside as he managed to wander out of his doghouse, off of the lawn, and was subsequently located in the vicinity of Florence Drive. McGruff was wearing his collar, but the tag was missing. He was picked up and immediately taken to Animal Flannery Hospital, Flannery Animal Hospital, and was euthanized shortly after being brought in. Annie spent six hours combing the woods and the fields behind our home looking for McGruff, thinking he wandered off to die, while I was at work. We both searched social media looking for posts to see if someone had located him, but there was nothing visible to either of us online. There was absolute silence from all town, village, and public service and animal shelter Facebook pages. While I understand that posting photos may have been sensitive in nature for some that didn't know McGruff was 16 year old and within his final days, even a brief 13-word description like older brown dog with blue collar found in the vicinity of foreign tribe could have helped to reunite us. I also understand that some people have drawn their own conclusions about McGruff's story based on his appearance, but contrary to what they believe, McGruff was still eating, drinking, going to the bathroom, snatching up snacks from our hands, and doing all of the typical dog things, even on that Sunday that he was terminated. McGruff was being monitored closely. He just happened to wander off as Andy was cleaning and sanitizing the living room where he had made a mess. It was our wish to have him die peacefully at home in the loving arms of his family he, de he loyally devoted himself to, unless he required veterinarian assistance. Eight days after the incident, I was forwarded a screenshot by a community member in the In the Neighborhood Facebook page that R. McGruff was declared by an estranged neighbor to be dumped by someone near the throughway and was also described by them as starved but also appeared clean, not dirty, and for the community to be on the lookout for potentially other dumped dogs. I say estranged because this community is small and this person has a known personal vendetta against me because we differ politically. We couldn't see the post that they created because they have us blocked. I can only assume that the animal control officer acted upon this concocted story because zero effort was taken to investigate or to attempt to reunite the dog with its potential owners. Andy and I both made phone calls to the animal shelter on Monday, October 9th, Columbus Day but there was no answer. We assumed because of the holiday, the shelter was operating on limited staffing or hours. While we didn't know the animal shelter had experienced, oh, while we did know the animal shelter had experienced a Facebook hacking and other phone related issues, we didn't know that McGruff had been captured or that it was an emergency situation because there was simply nothing said about it. The shelter is usually very good at communicating about and reuniting people with lost pets. On Tuesday morning, October 10th, when we couldn't reach the shelter yet again, I decided to contact the police. Initially, the police dispatcher told me when I called that no other dogs had been found. 15 minutes later, the animal control officer called Andrew and informed, they, informed him that they had euthanized Armin Ruff. Upon conducting my own investigation into the matter, it appears that only first responders seem to be in the know. Had there been even a single iota of information about the matter, 
been made public, while the outcome may have been the same as McGruff's passing was inevitable, the bread man and his family may have had the opportunity to say their last farewell, and he could have died surrounded by the people that actually knew, loved him, and cared for him. I would also like to note that I was advised by Mayor Giacomazza that by coming forward today and speaking at this town hall meeting tonight on this matter, that it may cost the ACO her job. We are not looking for retribution, but factually speaking, there was little to no investigation into the matter, and proper protocols just weren't followed. I am disgusted and appalled that Mayor Gia Camaza would ask for me to be silent knowing that mistakes were made. We would like to encourage the ACOs in the future to use the power of social media or actually conduct an investigation before euthanizing found pets so that local families will not have to experience the insurmountable amount of grief that this incident has put us all through, including them. It is our prayer that McGruff's untimely death teaches empathy and compassion, not only for the animals, but for the families of the animals as well, because not every found stray is abandoned or a dumped pet. Some are just old and dealing with a terminal illness and stroll off, off while our backs are turned because we're all human and things happen. Our lives are forever changed. While we take complete ownership for our McGroff wandering off and recognize, uh, recognize his tag was missing from his collar, making it difficult to know if he was someone's pet or dumped as he was assumed, we want to stress the importance of coming together as a community in moments like these because had any other our other neighbors known it was our McGruff, we know that someone would have tried to reach out to us. I also want to take this opportunity to encourage others that so long as we have a First Amendment right to free speech, that you utilize speaking publicly in our town square to tell our stories and to share our experiences for the benefit of our society as a whole. I would not feel the need to be speaking here today if I didn't think that we can all learn something from this terrible incident. I would like to publicly apologize to all of the taxpayers as this was not their financial burden to take on. I would also like to apologize to those who had to see Mr. McGruff in such ailing shape because I know it must have been difficult not knowing his entire story. And despite our ethical differences, I would also like to apologize for Mayor G to Mayor Giacomazzo for yelling at him on the phone. I would like to thank Sam and Sue for being with McGruff in his final moments and for paying for McGruff's remains to be processed. I left an envelope at the police station to repay y'all. Please let us know how to retrieve the ashes and thank you for your time. Well, before you sit, uh, sit down, well, while you're sitting down, I just wanted to say that um, I give you my deepest, um, sincerest, you know, feel horrible for what happened to you and your family. Um, it was just a terrible situation that I could shoot and go through, and um, I'm sorry that it happened. Um, something that we will refer to, we'll refer back to, we'll look into, and to see where it's sort of, like you said, you don't want to ever see this happen to any family ever again. And, um, Thank you for taking the time and sharing with us. Is there anybody here on the board that also would like to speak at this time? Yeah, I just really wanted to thank you, Andrew, for coming out. Um, you know, we had a, a friend of uh, ours just deal with the uh, loss of a couple animals, your dear family members. So, um, hearing that story and uh, the powerful way that you spoke about it, uh, I mean, it is, I just want to thank you. Thank you. And we'll do our best to get you what you're looking for as far as uh, uh, I think that should be a priority number one. I just want to apologize, Andy, but to Andy for what you're going through. You know, Teresa just went through a similar thing, you know, um, to you and your emotions. And to me with her and everything she went through, I can't believe that she went through your family members.
for bringing it to our attention so we can change some procedures in the future. <coughs> okay, is there anyone else in the second row? All right, the back row. <coughs> sorry, so long ago. Um, very sorry. I just want to let the community know that uh, the co drive, the kids co drive that we are with Mary is doing with Hudson Ice Cream, we're going to extend it to the end of the month. So if you have any gently used coats, scarves, hats, gloves, or if you like to purchase anything new, you can still bring it to Hudson Ice Cream until the end of the month. Thank you. Transparency is the honesty of this board, the next board, prior boards, village board, county boards, whatever boards. You were elected by people. It may not have been the entire area that you were voted for, but you're supposed to represent the people. I'm appalled at that rule that was voted on, that policy, whatever the heck you want to call it. You were gently enough you let Annie speak tonight. And thank God no one stopped her after five minutes. Because I would have been up in, in arms tonight. And to go back to transparency, maybe it's time, in conjunction with Facebook page, do it with the village, you would bury municipal, go on the page, tell us what's going on. Not just the village, maybe we should be joint. We are working together, let's work together. Put on, we have a lost dog. We have, I'm just emotional, I'm sorry. We have the polar plunge. Not on your political pages only. Enough of political nonsense in this town and village. We're a community, put it on your own damn page. I have a quandary that I have to deal with. I have to sit with the mayor and the supervisor and my department head. At our last meeting, which was two weeks ago, and the minutes are with the secretary, with the, the clerk, the beautification, it was discussed at our table to do things differently this year because of the weather, to do the res winter wonderland. It's going to be put up in November and the lights are going to go on after Thanksgiving. And we're doing that. We were going to go to Coroni Circle. And Beautification was going to handle all costs, all the event, work with the village, the town, and the highway department to do a tree lighting. I have a quandary I have to deal with right now. And because it's a political election, I'm not going to deal with it until December, till November 8th. Because I'm not going to deal with it. With the people who are running office who are, we are Woodbury, going out and doing fun page, GoFundMe pages, and you don't even go to the committee that can do the job and has the money, which is beautification. I'm tired of this. Transparency, go to the departments and the people who are in this town and village who do the job and get the job done. And I'm not going to, you know, I can go after other things. Your elected board you have an email address. That's to be used for business only. 
not as a personal email to the village board to ask for something for another business. That's unethical, and I have proof of it.
tree lighting. This is it's supposed to be our fourth year in a row, and we've done it with the beautification committee in the past, and um, you know, and now because of political reasons, it's becoming this whole tossing game, you know, and just like in the beautification committee when Mayor Giacomazza didn't want them doing Oak Clove and Buena Vista, Brony Circle, we're very hurt, you know, our community group was hurt over being kind of used in, in a ploy like this, and uh, it takes away from what we want to do for the community, and it's a shame, and, you know, this is one of the reasons why I really didn't want to get involved in politics, because it takes away from the genuine stuff, so, um, I can agree with Maria. We may not see it the same way, but you know, it feels the same. So that's why I was that. Councilmember Etzel. Uh yeah, I am sorry, but you feel like that was a beautiful speech and you're very uh and, and uh, hopefully we'll get something in place that that can happen Uh Joey, I have Trunker Tree. Nobody mentioned that. Oh, that's that's right. Oh. Uh, sorry, <laughs> it's all right. We'll leave it to Desiree. Yeah, I need to find out where it is. So that's all I got. Oh yeah, Trunk or Treat is October 31st, which is Halloween night. Same thing. Um, six to nine, six to eight at the Center Valley Elementary School front parking lot. Oh, sorry. He wants to know what day that is. Halloween night is October 31st. Um, so we encourage all to come out and, and participate. There's no politics allowed at the event. That's not to be confused about <coughs> political entities having trunks. Political entities have trunks, they just can't politic. So if everyone comes up and yells at me about that, that is very clear. Uh, Jimmy, I, for the past two years, I have spoken about elections every meeting, and I just can't talk about it anymore because it's and it breaks my heart for me to beg people to come out and vote and tell them where they vote and when the vote is being held and then only the small people that show up. You can watch the tapes. You see me, and you weren't at the meetings because you already started coming, which is great, but you will see that every meeting, the, like two months before every election, I would say, don't forget to vote at this location. And then we had a couple that moved around and they changed, but it's been said, trust me. There's literature in my office as well. Everybody comes in, can pick up the sample ballot, can pick up the dates and locations for early voting. It's all available in my office. And then I want to wish my husband a happy 20th wedding anniversary. Just saying. So, okay. so you found this one All right. Uh, I just want to make a small mention to the uh, regarding the buildings and grounds. We worked with. There was a um, the seniors who today went on a trip, and um, while they were gone, the I mean. The um, senior center was closed today, and the building and ground did a uh, beautiful job on the back entrance to the senior center. With the, um, they fixed the pavers, they fixed the, um, the, the corny, the face. It was just a tremendous amount of work that was done today. It was beautiful, and it was, uh, you know, it just goes to show you, you know, to me, I, I can't get over how much work they do for us, and I want to keep mentioning that. It's just great. Um, all right, so with that being said, um, I'll take a motion to uh, second the second Make a motion. Yeah. Okay, good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.